Hello guys, welcome back to our third video on the timing chain fiasco. And uh, so we came back from Napa and <clears throat> I got this bundle here for vacuum lines and stuff if we ever need them. And here's the hose that we got. I'll show you where it goes. It goes it goes like back here. And um, so basically we're just gonna put that on. We're just gonna put the hose on this side and then put the intake on and then put it on to wherever it goes. And then we'll start putting the rest of it back together. <clears throat> so we'll just cut back later on. We're just uh, putting the valve cover on, put the gasket on there and all that. Did a bunch of boring things off camera, put the spark plugs in, we put the intake stuff back on and slave cylinder. Yeah, the slave cylinder. Those are just boring things that you guys probably have seen a dozen times already. So I didn't bother recording that stuff. Um, but we're cut. We're really close now. We just got to put we put the uh, alternator on there back on the brackets. Yeah, we just got to finish the intake stuff there. Hook up these exhaust, um, so there's that exhaust line thing there. Gotta hook that back up there. Heat shield. Yeah, heat shield. And uh, then we'll just start with the radiator stuff. So that'll be tomorrow in the morning. It's getting real cold out here. It's getting dark as well. But yeah, these Nissan's motors are just not that hard to take apart this ka24e is just amazing granted we've done this our you know almost twice now you know we've, we've done the heads you know we, we've gotten to the heads twice so I mean, we know what we're doing but you know this is super easy to work on i just love them these nissan heart visor the best man yeah yeah i know a lot of people like those toyotas those mini trucks but the gaskets on the wrong side. we're just uh <laughs> We're just, whoa, whoops. <laughs> yeah, we're just Nissan fanboys. Love these old Nissan trucks. Amazing. Kinda wanna show you this, um, these, the lights, but we don't have a battery in it right now. Kinda took that off and gave it to the Massey Ferguson, so. This is Luke. He's a good boy. You're a good boy. Hmm? Yeah, something I want to showcase is this uh, front winch here. So, story is, my dad got this from a buddy. And the guy, that guy got it from a guy that had a Pathfinder. So, my dad bought it, and then he made some mounts for it. And then he, he put it on here. Uh, and he put it on under there, too. And this is a pretty damn good thing to have on a truck. We've used this countless times. So believe it or not, we use that we use that winch there to work on our um, Steiger Bearcat 1. Believe it or not, we pulled that bear Okay, so let me explain. On the Bearcat 1, we did a uh, hinge pin. Let me go over to the Bearcat 1 so I can give you a better demonstration. So here on the Bearcat 1, what we did was we did a hinge pin job. So if you know what that is, that's changing the pin up here and down here. And uh, so basically you just gotta jack up the tractor here and here and put on blocks. And then you gotta pull this back. So when you take those out, you pull it back, right? And what we did was to put this tractor back together after they were, it was a part. We used the winch to winch it together, to winch it into place. And, and that, that truck actually winched the tractor back together. We did the hinge pin eight to 12 years ago, so we didn't really record it, but it was so awesome. It was a legendary moment. That winch saved us. It pulled the tractor together. This Bearcat 1, which I don't know how much it weighs. I, I think on uh, online it says maybe 20,000, 22,000 maybe. I don't know how, many, how, how much these, this uh, tractor weighs, but it like winched it back together, so that was awesome. 
But we, we pulled the back half to the front half is what we did. Yeah. I have to explain that. Yeah. We put new upper and lower hinge. We had to pull it together and we used this. Yeah, we just we pulled it, we pulled it together. Yeah. Yeah, basically this is a 8,000 pound winch. And but, but when we did it, man, this thing barely, it barely winched the tractor together. It's like, but that's why you got to have a 12,000 pound winch. But this truck here, this Nissan Dewey has an 8,000 pound winch. It's absolutely the best. It's also got a Renell bumper on it. That bumper is a Renell. So really handy. You can't see it because the tailgate's down. Um, but the Renell bumper is really cool. My dad hand built this rack in high school. Oh, chipped real bad here, but it's a really nice rack he built. And then uh, I, I welded this thing up and slapped it on the bed on both sides. This is for when we have hay or anything on there and you need to tie down. So, so that's why we got some railing on there. This here protects the side of the bed. As you can see, it's got damage here. It damaged the top, like, it just got damaged. So if we put this angle iron on here, you protect the bed. And if you weld this on top, you got something to tie to. So this is great here, great railing. I've also got it on the tailgate to strengthen it here. So this truck's really cool. We did a lot to it. Um, I mean, obviously, as you can see, these mirrors, that's not OEM. This truck's not OEM, but it is awesome. This is what it should be from OEM. OEM awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. But yeah, we're almost done here. Yeah, so again, I just want to show you guys our long bed. That's a 91. This is an 88. And so basically, this is a Nissan 88 long bed now long beds are hard to find but this has a four cylinder it's not the ka24e but it's still a four cylinder it's a, Z24. it's a z24 so this is a z24 instead of a ka24e and it's uh, a manual five speed so i think it's pretty hard to find a four cylinder five speed long bed nissan those are pretty hard to find um and so then we found this axle we did a bunch of work to it and then we slapped it on this truck here so we're not done we like what we do to that truck we're gonna do to this truck so we're gonna have to find or get fenders for it and we're gonna put the fenders on we're gonna put the lights on the top we're gonna put the mirrors we'll take these off and put the the big mirrors on it and we want to make this truck look just you know amazing so probably gonna put the rail on there we might make the same rack re make another one and put it on this truck as well because these are our hay haulers so might as well protect the truck and look cool so then that'll be two two nissan duallys obviously these are custom the axles are actually nissan one ton dually rear axles off of like their v6 long bed flatbeds that they have they got you know they made a bunch back in the day Maybe not a bunch, but they made some. These are one ton dually axles. We built the springs down there. We, yeah, these things didn't have big springs on them. So we like, you know, got some other springs off of uh, other axles and we cut them and we put them on there. So, so yeah, we pretty much built all the leaves on here. And that really helps uh, hold the big weight of the hay bales. How many bales do you get on here, dad? It'll hold uh, 27 to 28 bales. Yeah, if any of you guys have seen that, I'll, I'll put a picture up right now. And uh, that's a lot of bales. This truck has hauled... 27 is what we've hauled on. We've hauled 27 bales on this thing for a long time, like many, many... Well, throughout the whole time we were, you know, delivering hay. So, this truck's really badass. Really love the long bed. This thing's a short bed. It's a normal bed, right? This is the normal short bed that we're on the, the normal trucks. So, that's why we, we bought the long bed, because we wanted a long bed dually. So, 
it's pretty cool stuff um, looks like we're done for the day we're gonna do all the things that i mentioned we're gonna do that stuff tomorrow and we're gonna finish it and we're gonna start it it's gonna be in this video we're gonna start it but we're gonna do that tomorrow so we'll see you then all right guys new day and new progress did a bunch of work here didn't really film it because this is pretty you know simplistic easy stuff just putting back the radiator and all that kind of stuff so this is just time consuming work and uh, we're just about to put it in the antifreeze so just to bring you in for that journey and then uh, we're going to replace a bunch of vacuum lines as many as we can because these are old hoses and might as well change them so i'm gonna be doing that I mean, after we do those then we're gonna see if we can get it to start it peak for peak performance it looks like um gatorade just don't drink it yeah that's awful stuff never drink it toxic i'll kill you disclaimer do not recommend drinking antifreeze some people that put water in the tires of their tractors they also put antifreeze in there so that the water don't freeze Now we gotta start it and get it to go in the engine. Yeah. We just gotta cycle it through. It takes about almost eight quarts to two gallons roughly. Well, that's pretty much done, so I'll cut back when we get more vacuum lines done. Alright guys, so we're just tightening up the battery here. We're going to give it a first crank and see what it does. <clears throat> just tighten up the battery terminals. So it's going to get a good connection. Well, we put this battery on the Massey Ferguson, which is sitting over there. So, yeah, no choice but to jump it. So, okay. Exhaust. She's doing good. No smoke. Does 
there's just smoke burning from like oil and stuff. just down the road not nothing too big starting off small not going too far from home just a little test drive running good and uh, yeah we did a good job rebuilding it and uh, looks like the temperature gauge don't work I get new one of those but overall did a good job and the trucks running smooth running good it's got to do some break-in stuff and take it easy for a while well everybody you can see that she runs and drives and it's just amazing the rebuild worked good we got everything on there right um, this truck is running really strong brand spanking new almost some you could say but yeah, no, it's really good. Uh, so this finally puts an end to our three-part series on rebuilding it. So basically we thought it was a head gasket, but it wasn't. It was the timing chain stuff and we replaced all that. And now look at it go. Changed all the vacuum lines and this thing is really good. It's brand spanking new almost. So, I hope you enjoyed the video and the series. It was a nice three videos. And it was really fun to work on this truck, honestly. The KA24E is a super simplistic motor. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed and hope we catch you on our next one. Thanks for watching and peace out, guys.